coming out to the fall 2015 town hall meeting. It is now 6:13. We'll begin. We'll begin by the introduction of the administrators and president. Good afternoon, students. I'm James Taylor. I'm the interim dean of the College of Education, Arts, and Humanities. Good evening. I'm Virginia Peoples, vice chancellor for academic affairs. Eli Guillory, Director of Fiscal Plan. Good afternoon, I'm Interim Food Service Director of uh, Campus Planning. Miracle Davis, Associate Director of Office of Student Financial Aid. Manisha Henderson, Executive Director for the Center for Undergraduate Student Engagement. Good evening, Brandon Dumas, Vice Chancellor for Student Affairs and Enrollment Management. Tracy Abraham, Director of Housing. Marcus Coleman, Dean of Students. Anthony Jackson, Assistant Vice Chancellor of Student Affairs, Executive Director for Admissions. Housing. Uh, first question is why can't we have visitors from other schools visit with us? If students have IDs from other institutions, you can't visit the campus. That's the university policy. Um, students who do not have a university ID and are not students at another institution are not allowed to visit on campus. So uh, that is a myth. Thank you. Okay, for financial aid. How does the refund process go? Hmm. Okay, so with refunds, refunds happen once attendance has been reported and all of your financial aid is posted to your tuition and fees. It goes to your tuition and fees first and then any remaining funds are refunded to the student. So of course, um, Pell Grant funds are prorated to the number of hours that you're enrolled in. Loans, uh, you have to be enrolled in at least six credit hours to receive those. So basically, whatever your tuition and fees are, your financial aid is applied to that, and any leftover funds go to the school. Okay, thank you. For housing, why is the Wi-Fi always inconsistent and limited? Wi-Fi is uh, managed by the Office of Technology, and it's not uh, managed by housing. Also, you will have a question, I'm sure, later on about the cable. The cable is also managed by technology, uh, and it's not managed through housing. So all of your questions relative to the cable outage and the Wi-Fi outages need to be referred to the technology department. Uh, excuse me, can I add to that? One of the issues that we had was uh, pertaining to the underground conduit that has fiber optics that's going to the dormitory areas. Was it, um, there was an issue with the bridge collapsing. I don't think they can hear you, Eli. <laughs> Gilly, I'm sorry. We had an issue with the bridge collapsing and the water intrusion took place in the conduit. Um, there was a problem that is being rectified. Okay. Next question for financial aid. Why all of the funds aren't dropped all at once when you refund card instead of being dropped in different areas? Well, it's Scholarships aren't submitted until our office, to our office until later. So of course, those funds won't be refunded until we receive them. Um, there are other technical issues that can affect whether your funds or when your funds are posted. Um, this semester in particular, there were some updates to the software system that we use, the banner software. And so there were um, some defects and we needed additional assistance to get those things updated. So this semester, maybe some loans were um, a little delayed. 
So other than technical issues, if the student hasn't completed their master promissory note, once they've accepted their loans, that could delay your loan being refunded. Um, if you were a no-show um, and had to be added back into some of your Pell, uh, into some of your classes, that would affect the Pell Grant amount that's posted to your account. Probably um, tops. If you weren't enrolled in 12 hours, your tops may not have been posted until you were back into 12 hours. Um, so I think the consistent things would be sometimes there are technical issues. Sometimes there are student errors if you're not attending class or if your um, attendance hasn't been reported properly. And just making sure that the requirements on your part have been completed with insurance counseling and master promissory. In addition to sometimes there are technical errors. Okay, why do scholarships and financial aid often have a cap? One day. Well, there is a cost of attendance and this is mandated by the uh, Department of Ed, it's a federal regulation that a student have a cost of attendance. So the cost of attendance is where they take into consideration all of the things that you might need to attend school. So that's going to be, they're going to consider your tuition, transportation, room and board, um, and that's based on whatever you indicated on the FAFSA, or whether you would be on campus or off campus student. Um, they factor in your books and supplies and other miscellaneous things that you may need. So all of those things are put together and they put a number to it and the student can receive up to that amount. Um, it's capped at that amount if you accept student loans. Uh, if the student is not accepting loans and all of the aid is a grant aid or a scholarship aid, then there's no cap to that. The student can receive as much aid as they're eligible for or as many scholarships, but once, um, well there are two things, loans, and tops. So loans and tops cap what a student can receive. But other than that, if it was just all scholarship and all grant aid excluding tops, it's as much as you're eligible for. Okay, that's good. Next question for Aragorn. What are the reasons for some of the food choices such as fried pork chops not being served anymore? Uh, 
um, this is where they get a lot of their information from. Um, so the stress, the importance of it, uh, out of how many students we have in a row, seven, 6,400, we might have uh, 23 surveys completed. Um, so out of those 23 surveys, we're, we're not capturing the, the, the true, I guess, needs and to y'all's needs to determine what is actually desired on campus. So we're just capturing a, capturing a small snapshot of the very few people that's completing these surveys. So that is a, one of the main reasons why we're, we're doing the menu that we're doing right now, because of the survey results. Okay, thank you. Well, how's that? Why are the students not properly contacted whenever the water goes out in the back of campus? When we're notified that the water will be shut off, we notify the students' um, postings and also via your university email. Um, so if you check your university email, and we also post uh, in the lobby of the dormitories that the water will be shut off. You have to look at the postings and check your email. And if we don't tell you, that means we don't know it's an emergency and it's been shut off and we can't notify you. We don't know the water's being shut off or it's a, a pipe that may be burst on the underground and we have no knowledge that um, the water is shut off. Okay, thank you. Next question. Can commuter students get more clarity on reserved parking? Good answer, however, there is no one here for parking to answer that. However, good question on behalf of the Senate, we'll make sure that gets to traffic and parking and that is addressed at the next Senate meeting. Another question for housing. Is it possible that students can get more washing machines and get the old ones possibly replaced? Washing machine service is um, managed through the auxiliary services and it's not managed through housing, it's contract with auxiliary services. So um, def we can check on it, but it's not a function of university housing. Okay, next question. What system is in place to hold the residential assistance account? I have personally seen RAs take advantage of their position and seen no repercussions. In reference to violating the university policy, policies and housing. If the issues are brought to our attention, we address the issues that they are brought to our attention. The students, um, resident assistants are held to um, policies in the department. If we have no knowledge that the RAs are violating the policies, then of course there's um, nothing that we can do at the time that's brought to our attention. Okay. So what is the procedure whenever a student does they complain about an RA? Um, there's a procedure you follow you, you, you follow your complaint with your hall director. The hall director will meet then in turn meet with the RA if the issue is not resolved and of course it will bring it to the assistant director and then to the housing director. Thank you. Next question. When will Dunn Hall be serving cook food? Mayberry is a long and inconvenient walk for those housed in the back of campus. Um, as far as Dunhall cooking uh, a complete meal, um, we're still with waiting of uh, the refrigeration to be repaired that is in the hands of insurance, basically. Um, the last update I have, which was last week, that all the parts for the repairs should be made. Right now, we're working off of one refrigeration unit that really can't house or, or store all the food that is necessary to do the, the complete um, meal service. So that's why we're kind of just we're just doing basically limited service for, for now until that gets up and running. When will it be repaired? Once the, they, they actually make the repairs and the parts come in and they schedule it with us. Okay, thank you. 
Okay, um, for housing. What will housing do to prevent all the students who hang out around the smoke area to prevent being caught in the back of campus? <laughs> the who area? Uh, the smoke area. The, basically what it's saying is for the students that... Did you say the smoke area? The smoke area? <laughs> <laughs> the question is clearly worth from what I'm guessing they're saying is what will students do if... We're going to throw that question out because that does not make any sense. <laughs> well, next question. Can we extend dining hours and services for night evening students who get out of class around 8.30, 9 o'clock? Great question. We did extend uh, Dunn Hall's hours of operation. Um, we were open for nine, I guess it may vary last semester. So in order to extend Dunn Hall's uh, service hours, we, we basically reduced one hour and gained another hour at another location. Um, but that can always be, you know, addressed uh, later on. Will it happen this semester? Probably not. Could it happen next? It just depends on, on uh, I guess, scheduling and budget. So that, that's something we can talk about further. Okay, College of Education. What aids and help are being enforced to help future educators pass all parts of the crisis? Good question. And let me tell you that we are working on that from several angles. The most important thing for you to know up front is that in order to be fully admitted to the College of Education, you need to have an ACT of 22. We're working with the Center uh, for Teaching and Learning to try to help those who are coming in with less than that. That's the most direct route since you only have to make one score. If we go with the Praxis 1 series, you have to make the, the cutoff score in three separate areas. Now, we are addressing that in that each semester in the Department of Curriculum and Instruction, the chairman teaches a course that is de specifically designed to deal with the components, the three components of Praxis One. She also teaches another course dealing with the Praxis Two, which is the principles of learning and teaching, the PLT we refer to it, in order to uh, get that done. A couple of things let me say to you that I don't know who asked the question that we have to do. First of all is these tests measure how quickly and accurately you can think in standard English. So what I'm suggesting is you need to be working on, first of all, make sure you know what your ACT score is. And if it's less than 22, take advantage of every way you can to get that up to 22. That's your quickest, shortest, and most direct route. And then once we get you in, then we will have support courses. Each of your 300 or 400 level courses is built on a component of the PLT so that we are building that into the classes that you take. That's a long question and a hard question, but that's a quick summary of what we're doing to address the issue. Okay, thank you. Um, for grounds, your physical plan. What would like on campus in areas that are extremely dark? In last year's city meeting, you guys said something would be done about it and have seen no change as a student. Great question. I brought a campus map based on the survey that we had recently uh, prepared throughout the entire campus. Uh, we have major areas that are uh, of concern for campus life. It's very costly to replace an age deteriorating lighting system. We have put in the request for capital outlay funding to the division administration for the dollars in order to resolve the many problems. Um, meanwhile, we are taking uh, the necessary steps, working closely with 
administration to provide funding for some of the major areas there. So we are uh, aware of the problems, and as funding becomes available, we are addressing the problems. Thank you. Um, well, uh, for air market, why don't we have another food choice in the union, such as Chick-fil-A, McAllister's, Pizza Hut, or just anything that includes anything healthy? Yeah, all those are, all those are national brands. Um, and, and the way that it works is to, to even have a national brand company consider doing any type of business with any individual or corporation, in our case we're in higher education, um, to where we have a captured audience. Um, they base that on total student school enrollment. Um, it's, it's, all, all, it's all a number game. Um, so I know in the past, last year or so, um, we were trying to get other concepts in and that was our biggest issue was the, the total student enrollment. Um, as far as healthy options in the food court, we do have healthy options. Um, it just all depends on what you choose to, to eat. Um, the home zone menu as, as would probably be one of the, the primary ones, right? So we have premium meats that are baked, broiled, sauteed, um, the only other fried option that we have is A, the pork chops that everybody wants that's unhealthy, and B, the fried fish that's very popular. Um, so, I mean, the healthy choices are there. You as adults and consumers need to make the proper, the, the appropriate choice to what you think is healthy uh, for you. Um, so that's really would be my answer, but just making the, the, the right choice would be a choice you'd have to make. Okay, thank you. Next question for financial aid. Seeing that financial aid is, is a problem every year with students, what will be done in the future? Because it often discourages people to come back to the university. I think that's a wonderful question and what I'll say to that is that um, we make every effort to get the information out to the students as early as possible. Um, it does seem to be a culture that students wait until the last minute to get their things in. So while the counselors are sending out emails and we're sending out blasts and communications to the students, hey you may have been selected for verification, please get your documents in, um, oftentimes <coughs> And I mean, I can attest to this. We wait until registration, those two weeks before school starts to come in. And it's very difficult to manage an influx of paperwork at that time. So if things were submitted in a timelier fashion or when we, I mean, you can be checking your emails all of the time. We send out things. So the earlier that you get things in, if there is a problem, we're able to resolve it prior to registration and have your financial aid package on your account well before the fall term begins. So that would be my first response to how we can alleviate some of the financial aid problems that um, the students feel exist. It is, it is mostly driven by the student. So um, I'm suggesting it to everyone here and hopefully you can tell your friends to check their email. Um, we're always here. The financial aid office, we don't leave in the summer. Um, so if there's questions or if you're not seeing that something is being posted or you know you have done your part and it's a problem, there are problems. We're here to resolve them. So timeliness. Okay, it has been brought to my attention uh, that Purchase Rec Administration has came to building. If you can, you can join us at the front for further questions.
Okay, purchase rate. Why does it take so long to get a purchase rate done? And why does it take so long for money to be put into account? I don't have control over the accounts. The accounts are done over in the controls office. But nine times out of 10, the requisitions are done late because they're submitted late. You can't submit on the day before you actually need the merchandise. And most of the time, that is when they are submitted. Okay, um, next question. For homecoming, the purchase work for homecoming shirts were put in a month in advance. Why were the shirts, I can't remember this, how, why did the company that uh, purchase records was supposed, to, was supposed to go to, why did not receive it on time because the purchase records was put in a month earlier for the home company service? They were not put in a month earlier. They may have been put in with your department earlier, but they wouldn't send, send the purchase a month earlier. That's number one. The, the second thing is you can't go for $5,000 on one quote for the university. You have to have multiple quotes for $12,000 worth of shirts. Thank you. Um, for grounds, what do you mean when, it's, when you say it is too much to put, it's too expensive to put light on campus? Are you saying it is too expensive to add light on campus uh, when it is dealing with the student's safety? Why is it a problem? Uh, it's it's, it's not a problem. Um, we are seeking funding in order to cover that cost. We've identified areas on campus to have lighting in place. We've had a couple of years ago, we had roughly about $2 million of upgrade moving uh, from high pressure solar unit lighting to LED lighting throughout parts of the campus, and that's just one phase. We have roughly about six phases that we have to work with. Uh, appropriations of dollars is what probably will come in in order to do a major upgrade of capital outlay, and that's anywhere from uh, approximately about a five-year plan of working diligently with the president Vice Chancellor, Finance Administration, funding is becoming available to address major areas to uh, have the like to take care of. We'll see uh, between Fisher Hall and Frank A. Hall, 100 foot tower light is out. Uh, just to fix the lights themselves, we're looking at $28,000 for that one light fixture. It's a very costly uh, pair. Okay, thank you. Next question. All of the libraries are resources to use the computers during late hours. Is it possible for the hours of other computer labs around campus to be extended for Dr. Peoples? The library is uh, late on most nights. And if there is a need to use computer labs in various buildings, uh, I do know that some direct school labs are willing to keep it open. So we would have to check with individual departments and individual uh, colleges in order to extend those hours. Thank you. For Dr. Dumas, someone has started a petition about the game room and the bowling alley. What are the future plans to get those up and running in other parts? I would assume that the petition, I don't know how the gender would be to reopen uh, the game room. The game room has been open, to my knowledge, uh, of late. There were there was a project last last year that we uh, initiated to create the uh, Jaguar Annex Room, which has been utilized by the student center and several other university entities. Mr. Gerald Jones retired uh, in February, and we have been since that time evaluating the feasibility of filling that position on a full-time basis, hiring a graduate assistant, um, or exactly what route, or having an additional staff member assume additional responsibilities for 
maintaining and operating that area. As it relates to the bowling alley, we all know that there are issues, um, mechanical issues. Several of the lanes uh, are inoperable and have been for some time. Uh, a significant financial investment is required in order to get that back online, so it has simply been a matter of prioritization, um, making sure that you, with, within the resources that we have, that we meet the needs of the students. I, you know, for the sake of the game room, my focus, even when the, there was a concern expressed when the size of the game room was decreased, and my response to that was we need to focus less on being in the game room more in the classroom. There were individuals who hung out uh, in the game room that I could expect to see as long as the game room were open, they would open it and they would close it. Um, so those hours, and of course, you know, we have to take some responsibility for all the things and that I was looking towards retention uh, when we when we did that made that change but the game room in conversation with Mr. Jackson and Ms. Coosby uh, we should have something in place in the coming weeks I should say where you should expect something uh, permanent and a more uh, stable operation of the game room to be in place in the bowling alley uh, the last quote that I received for a complete overhaul of the bowling alley was upwards of three hundred thousand um, dollars. That's just not, in my in my opinion, at this point, that's just not a strategic investment. Um, considering all the needs that we have, as we discuss lighting, as we discuss other issues and concerns that you have, so there may be uh, some less cost costly options that we can do to inc increase operational efficiency to some degree, as it relates to the bowling alley, but. As to why it hasn't been done, we've just been trying to spend the dollars that we have wisely and put them toward the priorities and the projects that you all have expressed a greater interest in. Thank you. For purchasing, can you explain how the purchase requisition process works and what is the adequate amount of time a purchase for it should be put in? The process is uh, your department submit the requisition to the purchasing department. We audit the, the files to make sure you're in compliance with state procurement. If you are, then we transmit it to uh, Attica in the controller's office, which handles your, your funds. She, in turn, uh, snap in compliance if funds are available. If not, she returns it and states that funds are not available. If the funds are available, we process the order and send it either e by email or mail to the vendor. Okay, again, for purchasing. There have been a few few events that have happened in July and August and purchase rates have went in. And those companies still haven't got paid yet. What is the hope of Purchasing does not handle payments. That's accounts payable in the controller's office. Okay, next question. What have we done about all the excess garbage that is found in campus, on campus? Mr. Gilder. Well, first of all, we, uh, we depend on the public to throw the trash away from their vehicles appropriately in trash containers, be it it's inside the buildings or outside. Uh, we take the necessary steps. We have a, uh, a small crew that comes in at 6 a.m. Morning, they scan the uh, campus for trash removal. Due to the number of students that we have uh, throughout the day, uh, we only have approximately about six to eight ground crew members that has to maintain the campus. So uh, it's a challenge, but we are doing the very best that we can. Now, after a home football game, you know that is major challenge but at the same time you know we as uh, students we have to take it upon ourselves to help take care of our campus I can remember when I was a freshman at Southern University staying in Jones Hall and it was mandatory that we had to uh, be a part of the fiscal plan operation to help take care of our campus so that uh, we can have a very nice and well moved campus. Can I just piggyback on the trash in the residential areas? Um, as it relates to the trash in the residential areas, I and 
and several of my staff members have witnessed students that actually live in the residential areas get out of their vehicles and empty the entire vehicle in the parking lot, trash. Um, most of you in here are student leaders and representatives of uh, different classes, and you all may live in the residence halls and have witnessed the same thing. A lot of students, we have trash bins provided for all the students behind the residential halls to dump your trash. I walk the buildings sometimes and I find trash bags at the end of the hall, trash bags on the elevator. Uh, these are where the facilities are where you all live. It's your extension of your home, away from home. Um, and the students are the ones that actually uh, contribute to the trash in the residential areas. We actually had to change the schedule of our custodians that work Monday through Friday to come on campus to assist because it was so much trash on the weekend when we came on Mondays that the students uh, actually accumulate in the back of campus rather than throwing the trash in the trash bins provided um, to keep our campus clean and presentable when we have guests and families coming on campus and parents to return their students to campus. It was pretty awful um, to see uh, the trash that the students would leave out. They would leave out of Dunn Hall and leave the styrofoam containers in the circle right outside of the buildings, and it's just a stone's throw away just to walk and throw your trash in the trash can. So as student leaders, if you all do live in the residence halls and you do uh, witness students throwing trash on the ground, throwing trash in the corridors and the hallways, please just tell them, help keep the campus clean and your living facilities clean and safe. Okay, thank you. Um, for Dr. Belton. Many a times there is a huge push for students to become more professional, perform for the resume building, etc. If students can become more professional, how come some staff that study university still have attitudes, don't answer the phone, and are sometimes just blatant? Well, uh, quite frankly, that should be unacceptable. Uh, in, in, in going forward, well, well, let me, let me preface my, my comments by first uh, acknowledging uh, the event this evening. Uh, because I, I really think that's notable uh, of you as student leaders uh, to uh, exercise your leadership in this form and in this format. It is my belief that the university should be responsive and accountable to you. And as leaders, uh, I, I applaud you for the role that, that you exercise. And that role is, is to represent the entirety of the student body and bring to our attention those concerns that affect your matriculation here at Southern University. So I want to just express you know, my appreciation for the questions uh, and for uh, and, and witnessing how you are indeed uh, representing and uh, 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 positioning yourself to, uh, to exercise the voice of, of the student body, because that's very important. Having said that, and directly related to the question, You should not allow us uh, to have an attitude. You should try to identify individuals amongst our ranks who have had and bring it to the attention of a supervisor. And I'm, I'm encouraging you to do it. Do we have a name tag? Do all staff have to wear name tags? Do we? Huh? Okay, so we need to find a mechanism where you can identify us by name such that you could uh, give evidence of individuals amongst our ranks who have attitudes. And 
and who's not responding to you in the appropriate manner. And here's what I, I think about it. One of the most frustrating things to me, uh, and, and this is not singularly related to the Baton Rouge campus, but it is, um, the, the most frustration I get is trying to understand why or how people can be nice. Simple as that. And I don't, I don't have a, um, I don't have a, um, any kind of personal issue with individuals who are not nice. I think people have a right not to be nice. But they, if they work at Southern, it may not be a good fit if they don't see themselves being nice here at Southern. And so I want you to hold us accountable uh, and, and, and I believe that in doing so, we will be responsive, you know, to your charge. So the answer is, you should not accept us having an attitude and not being responsive to your needs because that's what we're here for. And, and when you have evidence that we're not doing that, I need you to direct that to someone's Along the customer service, the, uh, the faculty staff, there were training meetings that we had last year to help improvement of customer service. So I would like to just indicate that. <coughs> Taco Bell, Panda Express, Christian Chicken, etc. We are both ran by airports. However, Grandma still has a smaller population and Southern has a larger population. Why is that that we do not have those national brands? Well, I, I can't speak on behalf of Grambling. Um, I guess declining student populations kind of everywhere in the state. It's just not one account. Um, all I can answer is what pertains to us here at this university and at this account. And again, I, I have no answers for Grambling. I can only give you answers uh, that affect us here. Okay, next question for Ms. Abraham. There is a big bug and insect problem in the apartments. How can we make our apartments more free of insects and especially spiders? have a company that we contract that uh, extermination contract that we have comes twice a month. Uh, in addition to that, students may have to keep their residential areas clean. Um, if you uh, clean your room uh, and you will be free of most insects. Uh, spiders will come around at certain times. We do have a time of the year that we have the love bugs and the ladybugs that come around and they're all over campus. No matter what uh, we do um, to spray for them, get rid of them, they're going to be here because it's a season for them. As it relates to insect and rodents in your room, um, that is because you have to keep your room clean and rid of those rodents. We do have a company that sprays um, twice a month. Okay, thank you. For Dr. Dumas, do you see a decrease in student enrollment due to food options, housing, financial aid? As a matter of fact, this year the enrollment uh, increased uh, first time freshman and overall student enrollment. So I haven't witnessed a decline in student enrollment. Um, I am made aware when students withdraw from the university, um, limited reasons why they like to do so. And I have not seen, what are the reasons you mentioned? I know I haven't seen uh, food choice as a reason that an individual chose to discontinue their enrollment. Um, most of those withdrawals are relative to, um, in many cases, military deployment um, or a lack of financial resources to be able to continue or family issues and things of that nature. So 
as for me, uh, based on the information that we received from the registrar's office during ex exit interviews, um, food service and housing and those other issues that you just mentioned have not been among those cited for individuals who decide to uh, discontinue their matriculation here at the university. Thank you. Or Mr. Gillard, to my belief, there is a shortage of landscapers, which has contributed to the poor landscape around campus lately. Is there anything being done to increase the amount of workers to better the landscape on campus? Well, we, uh, yes, we do have a shortage of uh, staff, and we are working closely with sending out um, a bid hire additional contractors to come out and help with that. But at the same time, uh, for agriculture students who are practicing the science of plants, uh, we have uh, reached out to the agriculture department to get students involved with planting. We have three new greenhouses that we process mainly because where the major costs come in at is the irrigation system. Um, and so once that's um, put in place as funding become available, then you will be able to see more of the uh, landscape. A few years ago we had a major infrastructure installation with the underground hot water looping system and chill water repairs. You never know what have a break that's going to exist and it caused us to literally just dig up the campus and a number of areas where we were going to have some landscape go inside the master plan we opt not to uh, you know, uh, go in that direction until the project is uh, completed. So we do have future master plan for landscape but it's all predicated on dollars. Okay, for Mr. Giller again, why aren't classrooms uh, kept up and cleaned either? Um, we have a ma major shortage in the custodial service area. Um, at this particular time now, I can tell you that we have at least 12 positions available for employment. The problem is that when you're paying minimum wages, to employees. Uh, if a job would come up, they will take the job. Passing the background check is another major problem. We uh, we have tabled the fact that we will outsource this particular service and we have to go through a few uh, I'll, I'll get a few I have a few approvals that's uh, through civil service. We are in the process of uh, having time to address the problem and working close with the chairman, the deans, and uh, other department heads to identify what problem you're having. And once that's brought to our attention, we will reschedule individuals to work overtime to address the problem. Okay, next question for Mr. Cope. Is there a need for student ambassadors and orientation leaders? Could all these positions be essentially worth um, the Jaguar Ambassador Program and, and, and our orientation leaders, um, those two different organizations and programs serve two very different purposes. Um, and and both, are, both are very necessary uh, within the recruitment process. As, as most of you know, the Jaguar Ambassador Program um, serves as student recruiters uh, for the institution, but they also go out to the, to the community and do service um, in the name of Southern University. Uh, the orientation leaders do just that. Um, they work um, probably from around March to into, into um, August, working with the new students, the students that have been accepted to Southern University. Um, they're kind of their first line uh, of student, to student to student interaction once the student gets accepted to, the, to Southern University. So both programs are very necessary. Um, both programs serve their purpose in ensuring that um, the name of Southern is very well. Okay, thank you. For Mr. Hillary. Why are some of the buildings around campus look old and abandoned, but how are we still using them? 
you have to keep in mind that uh, we have buildings that have been built um, back in 1922, the 30s, the 40s, the 60s. And I would defer maintenance for the campus is approximately $200 million. So it's, we have to catch up. And, and you are underfunded. It is very challenging to maintain the exterior of the facility. We are making progress. For example, the Southern University Laboratory School was built back in 1957. We, were, we acquired funding to put a roof on the building. We acquired funding to address the American Disabilities Act um, and the window system. So you are seeing improvements there. So as we establish our master plan to address deferred maintenance and capital improvements, we are using those dollars to, um, to aim in that direction to address that problem. We, uh, we spent, since 1994, we've spent $30 million. We have a balance of around $7.29. We are waiting on additional funding to come through by the State Division Administration for making repairs funding to address issues of that type. Thank you. Lord, Dr. Jones, what will be done to prevent any dangerous events, for example, as last year's shootings after the phone party, from being put on social media, and what actions are being taken to make sure they stay safe? <laughs> First and foremost, I mean, I think it's understood that we take student safety very serious. Uh, in recent weeks, I'm sure you, like all of us, have seen uh, across the country on college and universities, camp college and university campuses, the uh, unfortunate events that have been unfolding, uh, moving closer and closer to us, and especially now, even in our uh, sister HBCUs. Um, a specific answer about what will be done, I can assure you that we meet rather frequently with uh, Chief Johnson and campus police. As a matter of fact, uh, Department of Residential Life and Housing, in order to keep that area safe, uh, funds the payment of, I think, six police officers uh, on an annual basis. And those are in addition to housing employees. It's, it's that important to us that above and beyond the Residential Life and Housing staff, six additional police officers are funded by the Department of Residential Life and Housing to ensure um, that the entire campus, but specifically the residential areas, uh, are kept. I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that when unfortunate incidents occur on campus, there was a question earlier about individuals not being in school, being able to visit in the dormitories, and why could not outside individuals come in to visit you in your dorm rooms? When people come on this campus and engage in illegal or uh, less than desirable activity, most times those are the guests of you and your peers. Uh, they're not on campus to see Dr. Dumas or Dr. Belton or anyone else sitting at these tables. They are here to see you in most cases. Um, I think that as students collectively, you have the responsibility and the ability to control the environment in which you live and that you study. When you see something that's not right, uh, you know, oftentimes what you're worried about being labeled as a snitch, then they'll call the police. And you could oftentimes, just by opening your mouth and saying something to somebody, uh, head off what could turn into a very unfortunate circumstance. So we take your safety very seriously. Um, as evidenced by the recent uh, installation of the spike cards in the dormitories. Well, that was a significant investment. Ms. Abraham has been adamant about this since she assumed the role of housing director. However, every other day, one of the card readers is being worked off the building by students. So on one hand, you charge us and, and mandate that we keep your environment safe. But on the other hand, um, your peers do they take actions that, that make that hard for us to do. Um, so I think, again, as student leaders, uh, as regular students, regardless of whether you have a title or not, I think that we all need to take greater responsibility in keeping our campuses safe, uh, keeping and holding our peers accountable for when things are done to ensure your safety. 
that they're also maintained. And, and, and as student leaders, how many of you have downloaded the Keep It, the, the Jag Safe app on your phone? Uh, that's a mechanism that was spearheaded jointly by the Southern University Police Department for Digital Student Affairs and Enrollment Management. Uh, that is a mechanism uh, that's there for you, that's free to you, uh, designed to help keep you safe. If you see something, uh, if you're aware of something that allows you to go in, you can do it anonymously and report something uh, that goes on in your campus. Uh, you're here more often, particularly for those of you that live on campus, you're here more often than us. Uh, and, 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 and to keep your campus safe, you have an obligation too um, in, in that role in reporting things. Um, the best thing about that app, it has GPS location. So if you say something, if you, if you pinpoint something in a specific residence hall, uh, when the call goes in, it alerts the police department to the exact location. Uh, so that's that's something that all of you should consider. Uh, promote that to your peers to make sure that they're downloading that, that safe app. Okay, thank you. For purchasing, how many days should a purchase record turn in? How many days will it take for your department to process it to the controller's office? A purchase order should be turned in seven to ten working days prior to um, the individual needing the items. When we receive it, we transmit it immediately to the controller's office, but we have no control over how long they are processed. Okay, thank you. Um, Next question for Dr. Peoples. I'll take it, whatever it is. Okay. Why does the university not offer winter sections, uh, intersections, sessions? It all has to do. It all has to do with funding. When I came to this campus from the New Orleans campus in 2007, we did a May semester, and we also prior to that had done a winter. Session. And the simple matter was that it cost us more to provide those than um, we, we made. Uh, because the state looks at it as two semesters, and in the summer school, basically, we have to pick up with, with expenses. So it's a simple matter of economics. It was not economical, and the demand was not there for us to continue that. Now, the last time I remember our trying that was about 2008. But there does not seem to be the demand in terms of numbers of students because it costs up front a goodly uh, amount of money just to put on an extra session. Okay, thank you. Or Mr. Hillary, what is being done about the lack of keep up of the restrooms inside all buildings on campus? The majority of them are not up to par. As I indicated before, um, we will um, address the issues with employees working overtime. It's unfortunate that we are unable to increase the salary to attract individuals to work in the custodial service areas. Um, but if there is a concern, you can uh, send an email to the, fiscal, to the custodial service department. We have a website set up and we will address that immediately. We realize that we have issues in some of the restrooms. Um, one of the major problems that we have is dealing with tissue. Um, the dispensers will be broken into to remove uh, paper, uh, paper, they can just scatter on the floor. Uh, we realize we have a major issue some buildings, but if we identify the problem that's brought to our attention, we will address it. Okay, thank you. For Mr. Clover, since there are now school recruiters that work for work study, what is the sole purpose of the ambassadors? <laughs> uh, like was stated before, uh, they go out on the road and do recruitment as, as Mr. Jackson can attest to what is the role of the, the student workers in the Office of Admissions. Um, but our, our Jaguar ambassadors, they go out on the road recruiting and go to different high schools around the area. Um, they also, again, go out and do community service. And I'll let Mr. Jackson speak to the role of his student workers. Well, 
Um, so the student workers in the Office of Admissions, they assist the uh, admissions counselor in processing the transcripts, um, filing all of the uh, student information, and making sure that uh, we're working the front desk and covering um, front desk and assisting the admissions office in all of the processes. Um, we also have them, allow them to also volunteer and assist in calling the students and calling the schools in order to make sure that we can process the students more efficiently. Okay, thank you. For Dr. Doom, in the beginning of the school year, the 20 for 20 bill gave $50,000 for the scholarship. What are the upcoming plans for the 20 for 20 bill? And Mr. Brown, you can attest to this as a member of the committee. The 20 for 20 um, scholarship, the, 20 for, the revenue generated by 20 for 20 is not decided upon by one particular person. Uh, there is a group of, I think, 12, 12 or 13 individuals that have been selected representing every constituency and student group of the university uh, to share their priorities and what they think they should be relative to uh, way that the 20 for 20 fund should be expended. Of course, uh, some of you perhaps, if not your peers, certainly were able to uh, be assisted by the scholarship dollars that were generated by 20 for 20. That was the first priority that was set uh, and stated not only during campaigning, but after the bill was, uh, the referendum was approved and the fee was created. Going forward, there has been discussions uh, relative to campus beautification, um, the maintenance of the uh, student affairs fleet, which is uh, the shuttle buses and the, the charter buses. Um, can you remember anything else, Mr. Brown? Uh, yes. Well, I will make public the names of the individuals on that committee, um, and also we can post when the next meeting will be held, which should be uh, within the next week any of you or your peers who are interested in providing input or just interested in listening in or contributing to the, to the deliberations relative to the way the remainder of those funds have will be spent, um, I invite you to attend and I'll get that information to uh, President Diamond and you, Mr. Brown, and y'all can uh, make sure that it's disseminated to the student body. And to add one, Dr. Duma said there will also be another um, round of scholarships being given off for the spring 2016 semester. So be on the lookout for that. For Dr. Cope, Mr. Cope, what happened to the bike transportation system that was once spoken? Um, about a year ago, we went into a collaborative grant with the Downtown Development District and the Capital Region Planning Commission. Um, we got word this summer uh, that the Department of Transportation and Development uh, had indeed funded uh, that project. Uh, via that project, uh, which we had to pay about $5,000 in matching funds, uh, Southern University will be getting about 71 um, bike racks to campus. Um, myself and a representative from the Capital Region Planning Commission met with the contractor about a month ago uh, to discuss when we could potentially move forward with the project. Um, project is on schedule to take place on campus sometime in December, um, barring any holdups on time, a bike sharing program uh, for the campus that's similar uh, to what uh, Tuskegee just did. They had a corporate sponsor come in and sponsor about 70 bikes where students can go in and rent um, just to get around campus. And so that uh, once we get those bike racks in, the next stage in that project would be to uh, explore an option for a bike sharing program on campus. Thank you. For Mr. Gillard, why is the trash can in back of campus behind Jones always overflowing with trash? Okay. Next question. In, instead of pouring asphalt down on the streets of the roads, is it possible just to pour cement? I didn't know. It was the second part of the question. Okay. Is it possible just to pour cement down instead of asphalt down the creeks of the streets? Yes, it's very costly. Uh, keep in mind uh, what roads uh, deteriorated over the years. Do I have any engineering majors? Civil engineering? Engineering majors. We went on the stands. Uh, we 
have a major soil problem throughout the campus. You may notice a number of stress cracks throughout the roads. We have a uh, water level that ranges anywhere between 8 to 15 feet below grade throughout the various parts of the campus. We have an aging infrastructure with some storm drains, water lines that uh, have uh, cracks in this causing soil to out into the system that's undermined. And because of that, it's a cost to repair. We're looking at millions of dollars in order to uh, make necessary streets you know, upgrades. So we turn to the most economical uh, method, and that is asphalt. And until we uh, receive the appropriate funding, uh, because of the weather conditions, rain, the climate conditions, it's very difficult to uh, maintain the repairs and the whole level uh, for a long length of time. And, uh, I'm hoping I'm answering the question, but uh, scientifically, we need to uh, replace our weapons. Okay, last question. With Lent quickly approaching, what options will be available for those who are Catholic? For air more. Well, starting with Ash Wednesday, we do have a, uh, I guess, a meat alternative. Um, we do offer daily vegetarian options. Um, we do change the menu to accommodate us Catholics. Um, starting with Friday, of course, the, depending on where, where you're talking about, um, Residential dining, of course, has the fried fish and the baked fish every Friday. So that would satisfy the need for uh, to practice the Lenten uh, thing. But for dinner, the same thing. We'll make accommodations for that, and we always do. We always have. Um, so that's routinely what we do every Lent. Thank you. Before we all of this town hall meetings to again. Are there any closing remarks from any of the upper administration president? So let me again just uh, express my appreciation for all of you uh, coming out this evening. Uh, I want to quickly acknowledge your SGA president and vice president for convening this gathering, uh, because I think it is important that we uh, hear from you. I want to also uh, acknowledge uh, the uh, staff and faculty members who were here this evening. I've been here only a short period of time, but I've had the, uh, uh, the occasion to observe uh, the work of the Division of uh, Student Affairs and Enrollment Management, and I find that they're incredible group of individuals who bring a lot of commitment to ensure that uh, your stay here uh, at the university is, is one uh, that uh, provides for you to uh, enjoy the, the engagement that you have with your, with your faculty uh, and to support your learning experience outside of the classroom through activities and, and through uh, 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 programs. Uh, that ultimately allow you to achieve your aspirations and dreams. We have an incredible faculty, uh, one who I believe uh, are ably prepared uh, and who's invested in ensuring that you are afforded a quality educational experience. I got a text from someone said, are, are you angry? I'm not angry, uh, but I hate for the university to be defined by a small group of individuals so many occasions I hear as I go across the Southern University system uh, that uh, we are being saddled with a reputation of, of not being uh, sensitive to, to our students. And I think it is a small group of individuals who potentially could define the university. And that, I think, is undeserved. And I think we have to do something about that. Uh, throughout the evening, you've been hearing about 
Um, you've been hearing about our challenges fiscally, uh, and they are real challenges. As you probably know, over the last six or seven years, uh, higher edu the higher education community has been saddled with budget reductions. Uh, that's being manifested in some of the things that we talked about today. Uh, but going forth, I think uh, the university has the responsibility of really kind of shaping priorities. And that's where we need your help, to help us shape priorities, those things that really affect you. you know, I heard from your SGA president about Wi-Fi. And I'm hearing more about food service and about facilities. And, and indeed, I think we need to know, and, 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 and as, a, as a leadership team, I think we need to craft and identify resources to uh, meet uh, and, to, and, and to offer some focus to those things that impact you uh, the most. And I, and I submit to you that, that we're going to do that. But we're going to do that uh, by listening to you and, and asking you to work along with us uh, in, uh, in ensuring that we have an environment here at Southern University of Baton Rouge that is conducive to your learning experience. So again, I just want to again express my appreciation to, to all of you for, for coming out for the degree to which you exercise leadership uh, uh, in, in that you position yourself to serve as the voice uh, for, for the entirety of the, of the student's body. And again, I want to thank my colleagues uh, for uh, extending your stay this day uh, engaging with our students. I, I, I have, again, uh, I recognize your, your investment and commitment and I appreciate it. On behalf of the Student Government Association, we would like to thank each and every one of the families for coming out tonight.